Hey, welcome back to another tutorial from PH Studios. This is from the Space Shooter series. Last tutorial, we got the bullets working and got everything looking properly. Uh, we kind of an issue where the images were not properly rotated for our calculations. So what I've done is I've went into the resources folder. And I went into the resources folder in that, not the project, but the resources the images and every folder in here I changed the all rotation to be pointing the same way so that way if we do any rotations on anything it will work like it should so that all should be pointing to the right okay so I've uploaded the space shooter tutorial uh, space Shooter resources zip version 2 just now uh, you can get to it at the very top or if it's down there you can go it's very top of the content list at the moment uh, it'll be somewhere in the content list it'll be space shooter resources v2 if you download that file you will get the all the rotated properly images okay so now let's go back to the tutorial and let's go to our content portion and our sprites and delete all these sprites bullet paper underscore two enemy paper and player paper if you choose if you chose something different just delete those the selected items will be deleted permanently click OK all right now if you do not want to do that Save it somewhere, if you created your own, for example. Save the image somewhere and make sure they're all rotated this way. And then just reload it. If you're on Windows Vista or Windows 7, you can just open it up in the photo viewer. And click this to rotate. And close. And it'll automatically save it for you. So I did the paper sprites. So I chose bullet paper 2 enemy paper and player paper drag those into our sprites and our game should work fine now that messes up the player because now we're rotated this way and that again messes up the bullet because we did some things with it okay so now let's worry about the player. It's now rotated differently. So we need to rotate it to back the way it was. The way we can do that is in the initialize. Somewhere before the base dot initialize. Let's set rotation is equal to math helper dot two radians. Opening parentheses negative 90. Closing parentheses semicolon. Now, if we press F5, it's now rotated properly, but our bounds are a little bit messed up. So we need to fix the bounds depending on how it's rotated. Now there will be an extras tutorial that will cover the most complex way to calculate this. So for the simple tutorial series, I'm going to do this a simple way. We have bounce.x, bounce.y, bounce.width, bounce.height. So, we need to modify this. So, bounce.x needs to be texture, capital T, dot width. Bounce.y needs to be texture, dot height. Bounce.width minus equals texture dot width bounds dot height minus equals texture dot height now we'll press F5 and it's a little bit we have a little bit less space than we used to but it's the simplest way to work this situation Again, I'll release an extra tutorial because there's some 
very complex things we're going to have to do to get this working properly. So you can mess with this if you want to, try to get it as close as possible, or just wait for the extras and we'll be ready to go. Alright, so now we have a player. Now the bullets are messed up. Uh, rotated it properly so we can delete this correction that we did last tutorial. Now if we press F5, play game, it's now heading straight for us. Alright, so everything's good to go for now. We have our bullets, we have a condensed bounding box for our player because we changed the rotation. If you just want to change it back and delete the rotation, that's an easy fix. But it's a good idea to make, I made this mistake as well. It's a good idea when you're making images to have it all rotated the same way. Otherwise, you'll have to think, all right, this player is not rotated the same way, so I might need to do additional math calculations. And if you want to do that, that's fine. That's an easy fix. You just rotate the player paper the way it was and delete the, not do the changes we did with the bounds fixing here. Otherwise, there will be an extra tutorial because there's a problem. There will be a uh, fix for the collision detection in an extra tutorial because it will be a little bit complex to do in a standard tutorial. All right, so now let's go into the main topic of this tutorial, and that's the pause screen class. So let's go to the screens folder, right click, and go to add class, and let's call it pause game or pause screen. PauseScreen.cs is going to be a public class and it's going to be a derivative of menu screen. Okay, now just like the main menu screen, we are going to create it in a similar style. We are going to create some menu entry objects. We're going to initialize those by calling the constructor and providing a name for them to what will be displayed. When we do the initialize, we need to set the position and set the selected, which method to call when we select it. Then we need to add it to the menu entries list. So let's get started. We need a menu entry. We need two menu entry objects, a resume and a quit. So now we need the constructor, public pause screen. Now the constructor is going to take a play screen object because the menu system has a built-in parent object that when we set the parent, when we cancel the menu, it will reactivate the parent. So it's a parent is equal to play screen. And before we call the construct, before we initialize the pause screen, play screen should be frozen. So now we need to do resume is equal to new menu entry. We need to pass up this for the menu screen and a string title. The title will be resume game. And in parentheses, and in quote and semicolon then we need quit is equal to new menu entry this comma quote quit game end quote and parentheses semicolon and now we need the transition on time is equal to transition off time and about one second so let's set it one second Time span up from seconds, one second to transition. Okay. Now we don't need to remove in this case because many cancel will take care of that. All right, so now we need public override initialize. Delete the base dot initialize. 
And now let's go ahead and do our many entries. Resume that set position. It's a method. And we need to pass it a new vector two. Then we need to add using Microsoft Index in that framework. New vector two, uh, somewhere in the top left, but let's put it more towards the center. So 350 comma 200, that sounds reasonable. Comma true, this is the initial position. All right, press enter twice so we have a line, empty line. Quit that set relative position. Now set relative position, let's do a new vector two. And relative to the first element, the resume element, we want to push it zero in the x direction. And the sprite font dot line spacing plus five in the y direction. Comma. The entry we want to use as the source. So which is the resume. Now true as the start. And in parentheses, semicolon. Press enter twice. Menu entries dot add. Resume. Menu entries dot add. Quit. Okay. So now let's do override the load content. Public override load content. So, so that way we can get the uh, sprite font going. And just like all the other times we override load content, we need to get the content manager. And then we need to add user Microsoft at .content. content manager content. Zig the screen manager dot content. Then we do sprite font. Zig the content dot load. It's a type of sprite font. And then we need to add using Microsoft at .content framework dot graphics. Opening parentheses quote. The fonts are in the content portion, they're in the fonts folder. So we need to provide the fonts folder name and then the double slash. And then let's set up menu. Just the asset name, menu. End quote, end parentheses, semicolon. Now that load content's done, let's go ahead and build the selected methods. Void play or resume select object sender event args capital E capital A E and all this will do is gonna do the same thing as if we canceled the menu so it's gonna call menu cancel Now let's do void quit select object sender event capital E args capital A E lowercase e opening closing curly brackets and this is where several different ways you can do this part the easiest way to do is if you want to quit the whole game you just go to screen manager .game exit. And that will exit the current game. Now, if you want to do cr release every screen, then add a thank you for playing, and then wait a few seconds. You can add a method in the screen manager that says unload all screens or something like that. And you can go from there. 